Welcome back to Be Varsity Live. We've got 10 minutes left on this supersized December 10th edition of the show. Trevor Horn and I are here. Uh, the Ridgeview guys are still in studio, but we kind of uh, we, we let them off the hook for this last segment. We're just going to talk for a little while. Uh, by the way, Friday night, Liberty and Del Oro play. And again, I, I want to remind one more time in case you weren't listening earlier, central section passes are no good this weekend. You can't use them. They will not let you in the door. You have to pay. Twelve bucks. Uh, yeah, the $12. So if you have a pass, it's got to be a CIF State gold pass to get in the door. That's the only thing that will work. Uh, the winner of Liberty and Del Oro plays the winner of Camarillo and La Habra in the Division II AA state championship game. That'll be 4 o'clock Friday in uh, in Sacramento next week. At Sac State's right, Hornet Stadium, right. Winner of Ridgeview and Narbonne plays the winner of Clayton Valley and Oak Grove out of the... Uh, out of San Jose. Uh, Northern Cal, yeah. Oak Grove of San Jose... Clayton Valley out of Concord, and uh, and that game will be at noon on Saturday next. next That's week a cool environment. Thursday. I like that. I mean, I know you want to play in the big one at eight o'clock, but you think about that. Like with Lawrence, he's going to go on to Iowa State, and they're going to play a lot of noon games in Ames. And that's the cool part about it. You get to sleep in a different bed. You get to wake up, and your whole day is kind of football, like it is for them on Saturday. Yeah, no, it's uh, that's that's kind of how it goes. So, first of all, they got some tough games to win to get there. Yep. Let's get to our predictions real quick. We're going to start in Division Six, Kennedy and Saddleback Chris, Saddleback Valley Christian. That's last week's game, actually. Oh yeah, we haven't put these there. up yet, John. Uh, we'll just g- talk through them. So, Saddleback Oops. Valley Christian undefeated, fourteen and zero. Kennedy beat Avenel in that game. Uh, they come in at nine and three, ten and three, ten and three, Not ten and three, ten and three, uh, and we'll be playing Saddleback Valley Christian, an undefeated team. Out of the southern section, how do you see this one, Trevor? I think that you're going to see a loaded private school down there in the southern section area, and I think that, that home field advantage, a four and a half hour drive, is going to kind of play against Kennedy. Um, and I think that you know the great run again is going to fall short. I have a 35-21 Saddleback. You know, I, I listened to Dennis Moody in here, and I I was pumped up by what he was saying, and he's it, those those guys are going to play hard for him. Yeah, uh, and and they do play hard. And they've had a lot of success, and they're confident right now. Frankly, I don't think they match up physically with Saddleback Valley Christian. It's kind of like watching. They didn't really with Bakersfield Christian. That was a lopsided game. And Saddleback Valley Christian is more talented than Bakersfield Christian. So, to me, Kennedy is outmatched when you include the road, when you include everything else. I do I, I do like what Coach was saying about the wing tee. I right. think Kennedy can score a little bit, especially in the first half until Saddleback's athletes start to maybe figure out where they're supposed to be or that they need to stay home. Uh, could turn into kind of a shootout, but I, I don't know how much Kennedy's going to be able to stop Saddleback Valley Christian. I could see this being uh, – I, I have not actually done my predictions yet, but let's go 56-31 okay. for Saddleback Valley Christian. I see a, a high-scoring game. Kennedy is not going to be able to keep up for four quarters. Okay, moving on, uh, Division 2 AA, Liberty and Del Oro. This game's tomorrow night at 730 Uh and we talked to Casey Taylor of Del Oro. We talked, obviously, to Brian Nixon, Quincy Jowney, and uh, who else we have in? Jake Sini of Liberty today. Um, well, that both, seemed like so long ago for it you. It does, really. Both very physical teams. They, they both like to come out, run the ball to set up the pass, kind of hit you in the mouth. Um, who wins this game and what makes a difference for you, Trevor? Well, I think that the forecast, if there is rain in the forecast, that's going to definitely be advantage Liberty because they can run the ball with Quincy, with Braxton Prince against that, you know, with that big old line behind him. And I think that the difference it, is those Sacramento kids might have actually seen water fall out of the sky before. I'm not, Vegas yeah, they may have know. seen water fall out of the sky, but not, not to anything of, you know, it doesn't matter on the football field. And also, like <laughs> Casey Taylor said, they haven't played in grass and probably since playing that state game, probably against BHS two years ago down at uh, StubHub Center. So, that may be a factor too, but I really do think that Liberty is just the better team on the field, regardless of weather conditions, regardless of what kind of turf they're playing on. I think that Liberty is just the better team here, and they're going to move on to Sac State. Uh, yeah, I, you know the one thing that sticks out to me in this matchup is oh, experience. thirty-five twenty-eight by the way, thirty-five twenty. Okay, it, the the experience sticks out to me, and Liberty is a senior-laden team. Uh, Del Oro is not, as, as Casey Taylor told us, a very young team. However, the seniors they do have have been in this environment before, have been in regional games before. Uh, so that, that Well, two of them, but yeah. yeah I mean, may, maybe well, a, a lot wash, of them did come know. up, but the two that played two years ago were Trey Odofia and Justin Burge, and those are two very good right. wide receiver slash But key players guys. who have been here very before much where key Liberty players, doesn't yeah. have those. Yeah, and, and so that may be a wash. Uh, both teams have played difficult schedules. That may be a wash. 
Gosh, I, I, I want to say if I was living in Sacramento and watching Del Oro play every week in this run they've been on, I'd probably pick Del Oro, but I've been watching Liberty play every week, and I just can't imagine. Uh, there's only a handful of teams in the state, I think, that could beat Liberty the way they're playing right now. Uh, yeah, th- these two guys sitting in, in the studio maybe one of them, by the way. Unfortunately, we're not going to get a chance to find out, if, see a rematch. They beat right. him earlier in the season uh, without Jordan Love. But uh, I, I, the way Liberty's playing right now, I, I go Patriots in, in a tight game, and it wouldn't really surprise me. Del Oro's on a roll. They've played some tough teams, too. wouldn't surprise me if Del Oro comes down here and, and steals one, but I think at home, I uh, go Liberty. I, I like you picked it by a touchdown. I'll say slightly lower scoring, maybe 28-23. Sure. Uh, okay, and now Saturday night, Ridgeview, Division 1A, uh, and we're just going to pretend you guys aren't here, all right? Chase Mears and, and Lawrence White are still here. Just, you know. We'll, we'll pick on you a little bit Your here. Box. All right. Yeah, that's right. Tr- Trevor, how do you see this one coming out with Narbon on Saturday night? I think on paper, you need to look at how many points. I think it's like 53 and a half points a game that Narbon has scored since they lost the two games to, to Long Beach, Pauly, and Jay Sarah. And you see the six guys going on to college programs. But then you look at what these guys do, what Ridgeview does on the football field. And they do the same thing. And they're very sound and they're very good and they're very – you know, tough team to play against. And I think that what you're going to see is you're going to see two teams that are very quick, very good football teams. But I think it's going to be the, the toughness of Ridgeview that's going to battle against kind of that a little bit of um, kind of – what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a little bit of a wild card in Narbonne because they are kind of penalty-laden team and they do tend to make mental mistakes. And if you mental, make a mental mistake against Ridgeview – you pay for it, and you pay for it very quickly, whether it's Lawrence throwing the ball or running the ball, whether it's the defense getting to the quarterback or picking off a ball, or even in the, you know, in, the, in special teams, blocking a kick, which they did last week, returning a ball. I think that Ridgeview is going to come out on top. I think that they felt that loss last year. It's going to be a very high-scoring, very very close game, and I have Ridgeview winning this one 42-40. I should have gone first because I, I feel a lot of the same things as you, and now you're going to look like the smart one. That's okay. Uh <laughs> Anyway, I think I think, and Lawrence made this point during the break. It could come down to discipline. This goes both ways. Which team? You know, you got two athletic teams. It's it's very evenly matched on paper. Which team? Both teams are used to winning games fairly easily, and they're probably going to get tested Saturday night. Something's not going to go right for both teams. Who responds better to that? Who responds better to being down seventeen to seven early in the game? Uh, who responds better to a, a bad call? Who responds better to? Uh, a, a, an interception on a tipped pass, a piece of bad luck. I mean, something's going to go wrong for both teams. Who responds better to that? I look back last year to, to the Rev game, uh, and, and I think a, a huge deal was Rev playing at home and getting out to a lead and kind of making Ridgeview chase the game. And it was it was a shootout, and I think this will be the same sort of game like you do. I think it's a shootout. But I think at home, as a team that's shown itself to be maybe more disciplined, I think it's Ridgeview that gets out to a lead, and, and Narbonne's very talented. They've got to chase the game, and they will, and uh, and they're going to make it a good game. But I, I see it similar score to you. I'm going to go 49-42 Ridgeview. Okay. Uh, so we, we both like Ridgeview and Liberty. both see Kennedy season ending, but uh, obviously tough test for all three teams, and, and I don't think anything would surprise us either way. Quick note, uh, basketball-wise, Lloyd Williams, current schools uh, over at Foothill or Frontier, sorry, over at Frontier. Wow. Can't um, do that. Can't do that. No, nah, can't. I, I just cannot do that. I can't make that mistake. Uh, quarterfinals starts at three thirty today. Ridgeview and Liberty at three thirty. Five o'clock. BHS and North West at uh, against Indy at six thirty, and then Stockdale Taff at eight. If you've got eight bucks, go spend the money and go watch that basketball. Those quarterfinals, semifinals, six thirty and eight o'clock tomorrow, and then the finals. We'll have Steve Lynch out there on Saturday at seven thirty. Sorry, guys. It looks like you're not going to be able to watch your basketball team. Yeah, probably not. You know, football fans will be busy on Friday and Saturday night. Hey, we our, our thanks to everybody who joined us today. We had Brian Nixon, Jake Sini, and Quincy Jowney from Liberty. Then we had Dennis Moody, Rafa Martinez, and Sebastian Zatarain from Kennedy. We also had Casey Taylor, the coach from Del Oro, joining us via the phone. And these guys, Chase Mears, Lawrence White, and their assistant coach, Chris Bandy from Ridgeview. For our producer, John Ferrand, who stuck with us for all 90 minutes, and Trevor Horn, I'm Zach Ewing, and uh, we will uh, see you on the flip side, everybody.